all right um hi so so i wanted to make this video because of a friend of mine who asked me to make a video explaining how to build a an api or a graphql api in python so i thought that would be useful for a lot of other people so i'll make uh, i decided to make this video private so i'm going to be using this um stra strawberry graphql strawberry python i mean strawberry graphql package for it basically helps us create graphql apis with python and as uh, you can simply search strawberry python and it should bring an um anyways uh so I'll, I'm, I'm going to be going so this is not going to be like a full-on tutorial like me explaining every step step by step we'll just I'll, I'll try to explain but i'll mostly be building i'll mostly be coding and explaining what each, each step does so that um, it can kind of go faster i think it will be more of a series of videos rather than a one a singular video so i guess we'll get started so um basically if you come to the docs this get you started page is if you follow the steps here on strawberry.rock slash docs on the getting started page the first this getting started page right here it's usually um, sufficient for you to understand it's, it's very explanatory and it's usually enough for you to get everything running and follow all this if you follow all the steps you should have a, a basic server running but i'm not going to be following the steps because i want to actually implement authentication so we are going to be building a a, a simple blog application that's um where user can users can post and each post will have an author and perhaps in the future we'll also tackle file uploads if we want to upload um, images to uh through our server so i'm going to go here straight up and on the um options at the left hand side here you should see if you scroll that you see authentication so that's where i'm going to be starting and if we look at this um come to this uh for examples in fast api we'll see how they have implemented it here so they're actually using fast api alongside strawberry so that's what i'm going to be doing so uh, i'm sorry if this intro is a bit rushed but i'm going to be explaining as i go along so um i'm going into my code editor left slash um, tutorials So it's going to be a blog application where users can post, can read posts. So we're covering mutations. That's a way to actually add, delete, or actually change things on the server. Basically, we'll be handling. We'll be talking about queries. There are also subscriptions, but we won't be going that deep. So just the basics of mutation and queries, and they'll be handling file uploads and authentication. This the whole thing should um. Take a series of or be done in a series of in a couple of videos. So I'm going to make a directory called blog since it's a blog application and cd into blog. Now I also create a, a virtual um, environment. This way, um, we'll be installing our packages for this particular project so that we don't end up installing them on our global um on our system globally so i'll be activating that the command might differ i'm using fish time now so that's why there's activate dot fish here but if you're using a unique system if you're not using fish you can just um source vm or whatever you named your virtual environment slash bin slash activate and you should see an indication that you are now in the virtual environment by this vm so i can now jump to my code editor i'm using new of him whatever code editor you're using works fine i'm 
Okay, so now I, I I really wanted to talk about why I prefer this approach to using um to using Django or a full on framework. I, why I prefer using this kind of micro frameworks to build my servers. So as you can see, we have nothing in our project directory. We basically start on a blank slate, unlike in the Python project where you have a bunch of files and folders already pre-created for you, some of which you avoid touching for fear of breaking something. Here, everything, every code will, that will exist in this folder or in this project will be code that we have written by ourselves. Now, I'll be talking about the technologies we are going to be using. Obviously, we are going to be using FastAPI and Strawberry for, these are for our, the main backbones of our server. But we still need to persist the data when it when is a create post. We need to store that data in the database. So we are going to be using SQL model. So that's what we'll be using to manage our database. So these are the three main packages we'll be using. So I guess we can start installing them. Okay, so a simple pip install that should be strawberry and fast api and uv corn uv corn is going to be um we're going to use uv corn to serve or to run our server we're going to use it to run our strawberry of or fast api server instance and then we'll install SQL model and Alembic. Alembic, we are going to be using Alembic as, as kind of a version control, yeah, a version control for our migration. So that we are going to be using Alembic for that. And we'll wait for those to install. Mm. Okay. Let's I'll copy this. So that's done. Now, once again, I want to go over the packages we have installed and what they are for. So let's let's do a pip freeze. Okay, so we've installed um, Strawberry over here, which is going to be handling our GraphQL operations, our query mutations, and everything relating to GraphQL. Fast API is going to be um kind of our main server um uvcon is going to help us run our server once we are done or while we are building and when we are done sql model sql model we are going to use sql model for handling database operations reads writes to our database will be handled by sql model and alembic is basically a version control for our migration so once we make changes once we create new tables and all that all those changes to our database will be recorded by alembic just so that we can have kind of a record of what and what have been done to the database okay so i guess i will initialize a git in it in here okay so we've made this um initialize a git repository so all this code at the end of um all this code will be on github i'll paste a link in the description and as i was saying we have basically an empty project every code that will rise from now on will be code that will created ourselves no boilerplate nothing pre-existing just a blank slate for us to work in so i'll start by creating a main.py file this is where our main 
I restart the LSP so you'll be aware of all the packages we just installed. This way our, our main or the roots of our application is going to be everything will come down to this main. Um so we'll start from by importing fast API from fast API. As I said fast API is basically the backbone strawberry is going to rely on to run the server for us. So our main app is going to be an instance of this fast API. And basically we have already created an API just by doing this. We can serve this already and we'll, we'll be able to make um, HTTP requests to this server to whatever um, URL that this lives on and we'll get responses. If you follow the examples over here, let's go down we imported imported fast api from fast api and this graphql router which we will later add to our app our fast api app here so that's what we are going to be doing so from um, strawberry.fastapi we will import graphql router and we we'll We'll call it a GraphQL app. Hmm. Okay. And then we can include that router. With a prefix of slash GraphQL. It means whenever someone comes to this URL at the slash the GraphQL the slash GraphQL part or GraphQL part. GraphQL router will handle all the requests that come to this GraphQL part. And as you see, it's, it's asking us where our LSP is um, informing us that we are missing our schema. Our schema um, is missing here. So we are going to add that. Um, so I'll create another folder called, called core. Just, this is just my own and preference of doing things. So here I'll have my schema.py. Now here I can create my schema. Now schema, our schema must have, uh, as you can see, this schema is an instance of, is imported from strawberry. From strawberry the schema, we import this schema. And we must pass in query par our query parameter. Our query parameter is required while our mutation and subscriptions are not required but you must have a query so for now we are just going to create a dummy query um, And I'll explain what's going on in a bit. So uh, let's pass this. So basically, everything in Strawberry is going to be handling our GraphQL um, operations. I'll be explaining with the docs to give insight or, or more examples. So all queries or all both objects, um, both mutations, queries, they must all be decorated by this Strawberry type. So that Strawberry will be able to recognize them as GraphQL queries. It will handle converting this class into a GraphQL um, type. And I think there was an example somewhere here. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So Strawberry will handle converting our, our class, our Strawberry class, like this class character here, for example. We'll convert it into a GraphQL type that can then be returned um, as a response from a GraphQL API. So if we have a type like this that that we want to return as a GraphQL um, response or as data or some or exposed in our GraphQL API, they have to be decorated by this strawberry type. Now there are other things apart from type. It doesn't have to be type. Some of them can be imputes. 
I will go over them um, as we go. So we'll just create a dummy query here. I will just say posts of type string. And they will pass in that query equals to this query. And now we have satisfied that. We can now come here and import from core.schema import schema. I'll restart my LSP so be aware of that file. And then we can pass in that schema. To our GraphQL router, and we have satisfied all our requirements. So, our GraphQL router requires the schema. The schema is created by passing in our query. If we hover over the schema, we see that we can, we can pass in queries, mutations, subscriptions, and a bunch of other stuff. But queries are um, are required, while mutation and subscriptions can be none. So after we, we have created our schema, we pass in our schema to this GraphQL router and we include that router to our app, our fast API app. Now all that's left is to serve um, our fast API app. And we'll use Unicorn. Remember we installed Unicorn. So um, I'll open my terminal and activate that virtual environment. And I'll be using UVCon. So UVCon since UVCon is installed in this virtual environment and followed by the, the name of the of the followed by the name of the file see the dice main.py so main.py then after column whatever you named your app we named we named our app app here so that's why we are going to be calling app down here so app and we'll put the dash dash reload flag so that once ever whenever we make changes to in our code um uvcon will detect that and reload the app so that should start our server and yeah and now we can go to our local host or this http url Ah, uh, we can go to this URL and we should see, yeah, and we are here. But as you notice, there, there's nothing here because we set our prefix for our GraphQL app to this GraphQL part. So it has, to, we have to add slash GraphQL. We have to go to this GraphQL app or part. And now we are exposed to our API, our, our uh, let me reduce this. Okay. And this is our GraphQL um, app ready, very easy, just a few lines of code. The main, the main um, part of this app are in this file. We have our app, we have our GraphQL app, and we include our app to our fast API app right here and um, here we are so you can come you can click on this button here to kind of to um, have, have access to the documentation of all the types that are available on your server or that are exposed by your server and you see we only have one query type there are no mutations or subscriptions because remember we didn't pass those we only passed we only passed in a query so that's why we only have a query here but if you click on this query type we see this post field this post field here and it returns a string and that's all so you can always come here to um for the documentation of your schema all right so we are going to go we are going to create a post type quickly now because i've used okay um i'm going to quickly add this pi cache to dot git ignore so underscore by cash yeah all right so because i've used python i'm kind of um i mean django because i've used django i'm kind of 
leaning to the idea of having each application or how Django calls it applications, each segment of your app of or your server stored in a separate folder. So since we are creating a blog now, I'm going to create a folder called blog. This will contain all our logic for our blog specific or our blog specific logic. So we are going to be creating types, our type types.py now these types are basically what strawberry is going to be transforming into these graphql types so they are going to in our code since we're using python they are going to be represented by python classes then strawberry will handle transforming them into graphql types that we can now serve um, to our users so we can now expose on ipi so we are going to be creating a post type so I remember all types should be decorated by this strawberry dot type decorator. So we'll create a type called post post type, and I want our post to have a title, which is a string. Um, a summary, um, which is also a string and a body which also be a string now our post will have an author in the future that's when we implement the authentication but for now this this tree will do a title summary and body so these um three fields on our post type will be enough i'm going to create a query or query file now this will hand this in this file we'll write all our queries that are related to this our blog application so they can become they can um you might have many queries in the future so that's why i prefer having them in separate files like this so we'll create or uh, uh, again it, they have to be decorated by this strawberry dot type i'll create a class called blog queries now we are going to create a um, a field that is it's a bit different from this field in that it's going to be a function or a resolver. I, I guess in GraphQL it's called the resolver function, but it's going to be a function that will return a value rather than just um, a straight up type like title, a set of variable. It's going to be a function. So and those kind of fields, if you read the documentation, if you follow. I guess I'll just introduce that quickly. So this this is basically a way to um, handle them. You have your name, which is going to be called to this strawberry field, and then um, the field is is going to take in a resolver, which is a function that returns a value right here. So, but I, I feel like this is kind of not straightforward enough for me so um there's also a different way to implement this using decorators and that's why i like strawberry strawberry almost everything can be done with decorators and i think it's just more elegant so decorate that our function um with this strawberry dot field decorator and we define our function so this is going to return a list of posts self and it will return a list of posts now this is another um, benefit of using strawberry i for me personally is that you get a lot of type hints like this most things are, are, are um there, there isn't there isn't static typing in python but you get a lot of typings and your LSP informs you about all of these things, which is which you just, just, just don't get that from Django. So um, I guess I will start my LSP to form it about that blog folder that we created. All right, so we are going to return a list of posts. And since we're since the LSP is complaining because we haven't returned anything, so we are going to do that now. So um. Let's create um, a variable post. 
where it's going to um an array or a list it's going to be a list of post types now as i said say the lsp is in formula that we created this post type and we didn't pass in the parameters that we are required which are um which are title summary and body so we have to pass that in that's for me that's the power of strawberry a lot of typing to guide you to prevent you from uh, making mistakes so we'll create a title be equals to test post a summary equals to testing um posts and our body testing with hard coded data yeah so we have that and we can just return posts and we are done even though the post has only one item but we have made the comment here and we are done so we created the post type or we just these these are these are hard coded values obviously in the future we are going to be collecting these values from our database but for now we have, we have created a post type um in this list and returned it so it satisfies this um return type statement here but now our app isn't aware of this this whatever is in this app is not aware of this block folder so we are going to go and inform it about those queries so we'll remove this right pass here or pass this and um we'll import the block queries that we just created so this query can inherit from that, that the previous uh, the block queries we just created and the server should reload automatically and we should have that let's refresh and if we go to our docs we should see our posts field here that returns a list a, uh, this post type um, surrounded by square brackets it returns a list of post type and a post type has these fields so let's test that um so how how we i guess this this is going to be an explanation on how we write or make graphql request so since we are making a query it is prefix our our graphql request is prefixed by this query keyword basically now we can optionally name our our optionally name our um our requests or our yeah our graphql request basically so we have created this or we are querying we have said that we are going to query data and we are naming it posts and if if i i just clicked if you press control space on your keyboard you should have all the suggestions pop up and we see this post field that we created earlier now after we within coil brace we can select the fields we want we want to be returned and there we go we are returned the title the the and um, the data posts and the title and that's about one of the advantages of graphql is that you can select specific fields you want to be returned to you like now if we say we need the body as well there we go um we have the title and we have the body so that's that a simple query first of all you start with the keyword if it was a mutation we are we'll start with the mutation keyword naming is optional you can you don't have to name it but i do prefer naming mine so you start with the keyword an optional name and within that are then followed by um square curly braces then within the curly braces the name of the field followed by curly braces and then the individual fields you 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 um you need oh, oh no so that's that um i guess the next step we're going to take is to 
set up our database so we have had an a simple um introduction to how strawberry works and how it operates or how it um, re, um interacts with with fast api to um basically serve your i don't know what i'm saying but we have added fast api and strawberry to create our graphql server and it's i don't think it's that hard very very few lines of code the first thing we did was create our app and instance of fast api then we created our route go away yeah then we created our graphql app which which is an instance of um, graphql router which requires a schema which we then created and we said as our schema re needs or it is it is um it is a must basically to pass in a query to your schema now in the future when we create mutations you can also pass mutations and subscriptions but for now we only have our queries and we also reviewed how to create types our types are basically the the um kind of representation of the data that we can return to a user like this post is as a result of the post type that we defined here so it means that within this we have access to these three fields that are here that we defined on our post type and they are basically python classes but are decorated with this um, strawberry dot type decorator and then we saw how to um, resolve a query now this function here is called the resolver because it after it is called it returns a value basically and these functions um they are it is easier i prefer i think it's more elegant to do it this way to decorate these functions with this strawberry dot field decorator then inside here your logic for returning the data whatever data you want to return will be written and i think that's that that's very a simple introduction to strawberry and to um, um graphql apis in python